Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I do have a 10 minute watercolor painting for you, but before I get into it, I did want to mention my website, coreyfrankcreates.com. You can go there and check out my art shop, which has a bunch of really cool products with my artwork printed on them available. You can also sign up for my weekly email newsletter at the bottom of any page on my website. It's a great way to stay in touch with me and see what I'm up to. So again, coreyfrankcreates.com, I'd love for you to check it out. Okay, today's video is of a beautiful, vibrant orange fish. The reference image I used is from unsplash.com. They have copyright-free images on there, but I do have the image linked in the description in case you want to follow along. Otherwise, feel free to just sit back, relax, and enjoy. So as is the case with any 10-minute painting that I do, I don't have an underdrawing on the paper first. I just go in with the paint. I am looking at the reference image as I mentioned in the introduction so that I do have something to look at and base the painting off of. But these 10 minute paintings are more about getting paint to paper and finishing something in a short amount of time so it can help motivate you to continue painting. So I have my size 8 round brush that's from the Silver Limited Brush Company. The black velvet line these are really high quality water watercolor brushes and they're pretty expensive but they do work very well and i am using cadmium red light which is a very orangey red tone and i'm starting out with the sort of face colors and it's going to take a few moments before it's going to become recognizable as a fish shape i did spend a little bit of time up front here kind of blocking in the color on the face and kind of around the eyes area. I did add right here a little bit of cadmium yellow to give it a little more of an orangey tone rather than the red orange color. Most of the coloring in this fish is a kind of orangey red and then it also gets into some kind of neon oranges that have more yellow in them. You can tell as I work that when I want finer lines and details, I go up onto the tip of the brush, which when wet forms into a pretty fine point. So even though it's a slightly larger size round brush, it's not a detail brush like a size zero, one, or two, but because it comes to a fine point, I can still get quite nice details and not have to worry about switching back and forth between brushes. So these round brushes are fairly multi-purpose. You can paint details with them, but then for the larger ones, you can also turn them on their side and fill in larger areas of color at one time, which is convenient for making washes. Again, just kind of spreading the paint around a little bit. There's a portion on the head that has a little bit of kind of a white highlight and I didn't maintain the white of the paper so I had to lift some of that paint off a little bit. And I do that by rinsing the brush, making sure it's clean and then blotting it on my towel so that it's just damp rather than really wet and kind of lifting some of the paint off the surface, which with cold press paper, this, that's what I'm using. I'm using cold press 140 pound watercolor paper it does tend to absorb the water and pigment fairly quickly, so you just have to be careful if you want to lift your paint off to kind of just re-wet it a bit and then kind of use a semi-damp brush to lift color off. It's not generally going to get fully back to white, but you will be able to um, make some minor corrections here and there. And here's like I talked about earlier, using the side of the brush to fill in larger areas of color. It's still not quite recognizable as a fish that's going to come a little bit later with the sort of eyes and mouth details and the fins, of course. But again, I went in and, and blocked in a light wash. There was a little more water in it rather than as much pigment like I used at the beginning. But I used the cadmium red light and then went in with the cadmium yellow a little bit for that kind of body color that is more of the orangey tone rather than red orange. And here you can see I'm finally starting to block in the fins and just being very kind of loose with it 
just putting the sort of stripes and striations to hint at the sort of feathery, fin-like texture. And uh, again, the texture of the fish's skin on the fins is, is very fine and almost feathery, see-through a little bit. So again, I wanted to have those kind of striations and stripes to hint at that almost tissue papery texture. Since this is only a 10 minute painting, I used a fairly limited color palette, uh, which definitely got the job done. For a longer painting, I would be probably mixing up more custom colors. But for the purposes of a quick painting, trying to use the colors you already have in your palette can be really helpful. So again, you see me going back to the same colors over and over, that cadmium red light and the cadmium yellow. I do wind up using some burnt sienna a little bit, which is kind of a rusty orange color in a little while. And then for the kind of tips of the fins, which are really more of a white color, but again, I'm painting on white paper, so it's a little hard to tell. So, uh, I mean, you wouldn't be able to see white show through on white paper, obviously, because it's already white. So for the kind of white tips of the fins, I go in with some ultramarine blue. For this tail fin, I'm using fairly thick paint. You can see some of the texture of the paper was showing through. And when that happens, it means you're kind of running out of water on your brush. So uh, you can get fairly thick paint doing that. And again, it just gives that kind of feathery texture with the sort of lines and striations. It makes it very loose and flowy looking, which is very much kind of what the fins of this fish look like. There's some of that burnt sienna like I talked about to give some of the shadowing and dark areas of the fish. And um, I didn't get it quite dark enough. My uh, burnt sienna is a very dry paint. It absorbs water so quickly, so I probably could have wet it down a little more. Uh, but just know certain brands of paint, especially if it's older paint, it might suck in the water faster because it's more thirsty, so to speak. So. Uh, just don't be afraid to add more water, and if you have too much water, you can always blot your brush on your towel and then go back in for more paint. And finally now, I'm painting the eyes. I wanted to wait for all that red that I laid down initially to mostly dry so that when I painted the eyes, they wouldn't um, have the paint edges flowing into each other because when you work wet paint on top of other wet paint, it's going to just spread all over the place and not have sharp delineated edges. Kind of like what's happening right here with the mouth. I realized it wasn't quite dry yet in that spot and I didn't have enough of the black paint on there. So I waited a little bit, went and did some of the shadowing on the front of the face and the underside of the chin of the fish. And I'm just, I'm using Payne's Gray for that, which is a very, very deep grayish blue, lovely color. A lot of the time I'll use it in place of black or in conjunction with black uh, just to give it a more rich hue. Using a couple of kind of like blotting motions, just kind of pressing the brush down and then lifting it off almost like a stippling motion to give a little bit of that scaly texture on, on certain parts of the fish. And there you see, like I mentioned, there's that ultramarine blue that I'm using. And again, I was very light with it. I could have gone a little darker, but that particular paint, it's from a tube, but it was a bit of a less expensive tube of paint. And so it's not as bright of a pigment, which, uh, you know, kind of def in my mind defeats the purpose of it being cheaper, because if you have to use that much more paint for it to get to the darker tone that you want, then you're ultimately using it faster. It might be uh, more beneficial to invest in the higher quality paint, which will ultimately last longer and is nicer quality to use. There I went back and did the mouth, that just kind of opening. <laughs> they look like, these fish look like they have kind of frowny faces when you see them straight on. So I thought that was kind of 
cute and funny, uh, but just that little kind of black line right there, um, a curve, almost like a slight frown curve. Fleshed out a little more of that fin on the left side of the painting or the fish's right fin. And I realized I was quickly running out of time, so I absolutely could have added more details. I wanted to stick to that 10 minute time frame. So I went ahead and went ahead and splattered some of the cadmium red light paint on there just to give a little bit of fun whimsical splash and splatter. And then the ultramarine blue, I just tapped the top of the paintbrush to make sort of larger speckles and almost to like hint at watery bubbles because uh, again I didn't paint the full background didn't have enough time for that and then I did go ahead and add the signature I went maybe about 10 15 second seconds over 10 minutes to be able to get that signature in but this was ultimately a 10 minute painting and I was able to get it done in time so that really was all there was to it Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I will see you soon.